Welcome to the broadcast that the state-run national liberal media hates. Want the news without the bias? Only one man gives it to you straight and honest. Get ready for truth, justice, and the American way. And now, the man who started the independent movement. Here's Lou Dobbs. Welcome, everybody. And, uh, you know, I love it. Truth, justice, and the American way. We're all committed to that. But sometimes I think the folks in Washington can't handle the truth. That's why they avoid it like the devil. Uh, and no, I'm not talking about anybody. Uh, now, come on, let's not do any religious stuff. Let's not get any Nostradamus thing going here. Uh, boy, I tell you, I, I, I've got to, folks, I've got to be honest with you. My cup runneth over. Uh, we have so much to talk about, so much that is important, even profound to discuss with you. Uh, the national conversation. By the way, I got to tell you, I saw a CNN. In a, I was going to say intellectual. <laughs> is that the funniest thing you've ever heard? Uh, anyway, a CNN executive uh, talking about talking about journalism being the currency of the national conversation. That's what they said. And you know what's really great about that? I'm the guy who always said that. My show was always about the national conversation. Then it got ripped off by Rick Sanchez. Now the executives are ripping me off. What is going on over there? All right, you know what, though? I'm a big guy, and, and I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to, as a matter of fact, I'm going to encourage them. The more they listen, the better off they'll be. They just started a little late in the process, that's all. So I want them I want them to partake freely. As I say, my cup runneth over. They are welcome to whatever spills. <laughs> I love it. Man, oh man, strong news on the economy today. You're asking why am I in a good mood? The market's up. Why am I in a good mood? Inflation in check. Why am I in a good mood? America lives, ladies and gentlemen, and I got to tell you, I, I am so happy to see the supreme leader walking around being somber and serious and talking about nuclear weapons. He doesn't even know there's an economy, for God's sake, and thank God he doesn't because he hasn't completely and utterly screwed it up yet. He does have that little fellow, Timothy Geithner, out there, though. You know that, uh, what do we call him? He's, he's the Treasury Secretary. Now, there's a big old title for a little fella. I mean, my goodness. You've got to, you know, I get the feeling that the Geithner is sort of getting crushed under the weight of that title. But he's he'll persevere, I'm sure. I don't know that the nation will, but <laughs> Timothy Geithner certainly might. Uh, it, it's, it's good that Timothy Geithner is out there saying things like, our budget deficits are unsustainable. Folks, can you believe that? What in the world is he thinking about? Of course they're unsustainable. And he's one of the people creating them. So what does it mean when you have a president who's adding trillions of dollars to the national debt, running up record budget deficits, and he holds forth on, we're committed to fiscal responsibility, Sets up a deficit debt commission, puts some of the biggest spenders in Washington on it, and, and then sends out his treasury secretary uh, to, to talk about deficits being unsustainable. I mean, this is like somebody standing at the podium with a fifth of Jim Beam just, you know, chugging that sucker, talking about you shouldn't drink and drive and tossing the keys in his hand every 30 or 40 seconds, itching to get back out there. I mean, folks, we, we got it. This is the biggest bunch of hypocrites and sanctimonious hypocrites, sanctimonious hypocritical frauds you've ever seen. And Washington has generated and been home to a lot of them. So when I say to you, these are the biggest ones I've seen, uh, that takes in a lot of country, a lot of territory. All of it coming down in laser-like focus 
on Washington, D.C. Think about what these people are getting away with. What they're tr- <laughs> Look at the game they're trying to run on the American people. And my gosh, how, how sweet it is to look out and see some good news on the economy. Uh, I, I just want to trumpet the good news. I'm feeling good about the good news. Uh, unlike a lot of uh, politicians, unlike uh, some talk radio uh, hosts, uh, talking down the economy. Uh, I, look, I, I've, I was the only guy in the national media, radio, television, you name it, to predict we'd be in recovery in 2009 as quickly as we were. And I continue to have confidence and faith in American ingenuity, innovation, entrepreneurialism, American values, business capability, productivity, and strength in the role of the American worker. Put America back to work, and I'll show you who the hell's number one. And we won't need any, uh, what's the guy's name, Hol- Holdren, John Holdren, the the little, uh, you know, I, I say little, I'm talking about diminutive because he doesn't seem to have a grip uh, and I, you know, and I don't mean to in any way imply. I don't know how tall he is. I'm talking about the the uh, the, if you will, the extent of his passion, his character, and his adherence to national American values. When he says things like, "We don't have to be number one. We're going to manage the expectations down." And by the way, we won't do a damn thing about all the reasons why we are lagging right now. These folks are really apologists for their own failed ideologies, their failed left-wing liberalism, and then they want to take a nation and a people with them. Don't do it, folks, because right here, the Lou Dobbs Show is broadcast central for the resistance. Resist these fools with everything you've got, and let's start building this country. And when these fools talk about remaking this nation, tell them to go to hell. The nation doesn't need remaking. We need to rethink. We need to rethink the public policy choices we've made and get the idiots who've made those choices the hell out of Washington.